Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to a fashion moment with Tai Chan. I am Tai Chan, and as you can see, Brother Leon is back in the building. It's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we um today, you know, the topics today are really in sync with what happened with me today because I went to go see Wakanda Forever. <laughs> I went to go see see it today. So it was really dope and I won't do any spillers. But Brother Leon is back and he's gonna tell us why he was um out for a little while. We're not gonna really get into everything today. We're gonna do that next week for this because it's important for us to talk about this election season and what's been going on in the black community at large and the world actually versus the black community. Hence the timely um launching or release of Wakanda Forever. So um Brother Leon, welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be back. <laughs> um, for those of you that don't know, um, uh, right before my birthday, which is April 27th, I was, uh, had my physical, uh, came through with flying colors, and, and I felt good being a year older. And my PSA level was a little high. That was the only blip. Um, so I had it checked again a few months later and it elevated even more and that was a cause for concern. So a couple of months after that, um, it didn't level off and it didn't subside. So my doctor at the time, my physician said, uh, you're probably, there are two things that would cause your PSA level to elevate and one of them you don't have because you don't participate in that. So chances are you have prostate cancer. I'm fortunate that I did, well, I did have, that's not the question, but I, I, the prognosis was correct. I did have prostate cancer. Um, I was, it was detected at level two, stage two, which was caught in, it was caught at the right time. So it didn't progress, it didn't spread beyond the prostate area. So to the men out there, it's imperative, it's life saving that you have your PSA level check regularly. Um, there is a proven statistic, a proven medical fact that if every man lives long enough, every man will develop uh, prostate cancer. So I went to, to, to shorten old story, I went to uh, uh, radiation treatment. I didn't have to do chemo because it, was, it, it wasn't that bad. Five weeks of chemo treatment and it was successful. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> radiation. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, five weeks of radiation treatment. Um, and now I'm, so far it's worked. I'm cancer free and I haven't checked uh, twice a year. So my advice to every man over the age of 25 have your PSA levels checked at least once a year over the age of 40 to every six months. And I'm glad to be back and I'm. We have a big show <laughs> ahead of us because there is, there is just so much going on. It's so much it's, going on. We would need about 10 hours and that would be scratching the surface. So Absolutely. I'm going to let uh, Brother Ty, <laughs> who I just told um, he's going to lead us into the topics for today's show. Well, guys, I'm, I'm real scruffy today. Excuse my appearance. I'm trying to let my hair grow out because I want to get up one of those nice little full beards and stuff like that will happen and see what I look like. So trust me, all of this scruffiness is um, intentional. And I have my um, my iPad next to me because of all of the topics that we that I want to make sure that we go through um, and make sure that we are um, clear on everything that, that, that we want to talk about. So let's start with the elections. Um, first of all, <laughs> They, I'm glad they turned out the way they did. Um, even though they, the Democrats took their eye off the blind because for some reason we're afraid to fight. You certainly want about the Republicans, but they stick to they, the same narrative. They don't deviate from that. So we were basically brought home on the strength of women, especially our black women. Women ran for elected offices cross platform in record numbers, and, and they're about 53 percent, which is which is um, the highest percentage of voters, the highest voting block, and they voting home. 
But we were fortunate that they didn't buy into a part me, but the BS about it's crime, it's the economy, stupid. Having your rights taken away from you, not being able to decide when you can have a job. It, 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 these are economic issues. Right. So is so before we get into the economic <laughs> issues and all that, I wanted to get into the whole election thing. So now, yes, when black women were running at record numbers, but they were also being um, um, attacked and sought after. And also, I, wanted, I also want to um, also want to um, dismantle the myth of black men voters. We're voting in upwards in the upward of ninety percentile um, for the Democratic for the Democratic Party. And um, so, you know, and then, you know, you have your other voting blocks. And one of the correspondents, I can't remember who it was, but he said that even if you had all of the, all of the black people in Georgia vote, you still needed other people in order right. to be able to. Just, just, on just, sheer just, just on sheer numbers or what have you. But what I, the one thing I wanted to spell about voting is, is that I even have people my age who still are saying, oh, your vote don't count and it doesn't matter and all this kind of stuff. Even if your vote doesn't count, I feel like this. You are spitting in the face of your ancestors when you don't vote. I don't care what you think. If you can walk down the street to get a pair of Jordans or iPad and an iPhone and all that kind of stuff, you could walk your butt down to the polls and vote, even if it doesn't matter. Just one GP because of what was lost in order for us to have this right. And I agree that I agree that 100 percent because you're not paying homage to to those homage to those that allow you the right to do that to walk down the street and get a pair of Jordans. So yeah. they sacrifice their lives for you to vote. You can vote, you know, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That it matters the fact that they laid down their lives to give you that right. Exactly. And what also pisses me off is the media because the media I think has a large part into how we vote. And, 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 and whether we vote or not, because they say that half of America is feeling this way. And, ha and that's a lie, right. because in the last presidential election, there was upward of 85 million people for um, Biden and 70-something million people for, um, for, for IQ45, and that's half of the population. Right. So instead of saying the truth, that half of registered voters, because not even registered voters, because that's just half of the population, you know what I'm saying, what have you. So half of the population that chooses to vote or whatever, the other half is 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 um is unaccounted for. You know what I'm saying? So it's not true to that. So when you hear that it's a half and that the country split down the middle, it makes you also feel like, well, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Look what happened in the Senate with a 50 50 Senate. Nothing's going right. They can't get nothing done, whatever, whatever, this, that, and third. So we have to start holding people accountable and making them tell the truth. Well, even, as, even in the media, that when when the people surveyed and they say 70% 70, 70 of the people said things are not going right, they don't know the specifics. So what things? So what they try to do is label it as to who's ever in power, which of course the Democrats. Well, people are saying that the Democrats are not doing, oh, that's not what they're saying. When they say things, they don't feel like we're heading in the right direction. There's a link there of things, but it has nothing to do with who's in the White House. Right. It's, it's, it's situations that's happening in the world today that they think, well, we're not going in the right direction about whatever it is. But what they want to do is equate it to, oh, it's the Democrats. See, they're not doing anything. 70% of the people said they were happy with them. That's not what they said. No, no. They didn't work my phone. But that's the media like <laughs> That's the media like you said. This, this is the age of misinformation. Of, 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 of lies, 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 lies. Of lies. This is because, you know, that whole misinformation is being nice. It's straight up. That's it's straight right. up lies. It's just it's just all of that falsehoods and and, and 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 alternative facts and all that. Miss me with that. It's all lies. Well, they changed and, Fox and, and it was not Fox Live. This is Fox Lies. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so, so, we, we were talking earlier and you were talking about New York may be the deciding factor that make us lose the house. Please explain. Because this is why, which Democrats are, 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 are the way to cope with this, down ballot voting is very important. One of the most important positions is governorship because they draw the lines, they do the redistricting. 
Look at what happened in Florida. If they got four seats because DeSantis, we this, you know, did it. So they picked up three seats. Mm -hmm. In Long Island, when they did the redistricting, they didn't pay attention to that. They voted Republican. So they got four seats in Lily Blue, New York. They picked up four seats. Those four seats, and they, they, they flipped four seats. In Staten Island, but because they were blue before, they flipped to red. Maybe the determining factor why we don't win now. We're just walking around the house. In New York, of all places. I know. But, but see, people, 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 people really, like, I know New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, people think New York because they think about Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and Bronx, and Staten Island, right? They think of that. But New York is way more, um, yeah. way more um, conservative than you would know. I went to school upstate New York. Why would they so I know, upstate? <laughs> I know what the real New York looks like. You know what I'm saying? Outside of our little bubble. And I know what the real New York looks like. You pick, know up I mean? pick up drugs and chokes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it's so, I mean, like, so I'm not surprised about the whole New York thing. But, but I also am not mad. And I know I'm getting a lot of trouble for saying this, but I really don't care that this whole American experience burned the fuck down. You know why I say that? Because it wasn't built right anyway. Right. You know what I mean? And it Two wasn't built fair. It, it wasn't built. It wasn't built fairly anyway. It was never meant for people like you and me to have rights. Okay. So it's it's so to me, I'm not married to well, this women. anymore, and, and I'm also not afraid because I've grown up. And with the knowledge of knowing that my grandfather had a third grade education and my grandmother a sixth grade education and they were able to do what they needed to do, but that's because they had a community. And I think that with all of that's going on, we've lost our communities. So in this time in the 1920s, after the, the Spanish flu and all of that kind of influence and all that stuff going on, it was a wave of black millionaires. But we also have black communities. Now we don't have that anymore. To whereas the black dollar doesn't circulate enough in the community, it, it goes around once maybe. Right. Whereas in other communities, three, four. But there haven't been some. a black Wall Street since the Black Wall Street. Yeah. So I feel That's like I feel like, like I feel like we need a holy shakedown, and that people need to really feel what it's like to have those rights stricken from you because. Like I said, I'm getting a lot of trouble for saying this too. White women are always the protected class, no matter what. Even they vote against their best interest because even when they're not in power, even when their husbands control their minds, bodies, and purses, they still are protected from everybody else because they're held to a certain standard and certain pedestal or what have you. And they'll also be the same ones who'll be able to fly to Europe to get procedures done that needs to be, that we need to get done. And you know, you know who's the leading percentage of affirmative action benefits the most? White, white women. women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know that. Yeah. They think oh, it's, it's a knock again, but why do you think they're fighting so hard? Because it's white women. Yeah. Black case in point, black women are the leaders of new entrepreneurial business businesses, but they get less funding. And it's still more difficult for them to get loans. Exactly. It's crazy. So we, we, we say all of this to say that your vote matters and that this election has taken us through hula hoops and holy and, and, and under the bridge and over the bridge and through the water and through the river and the ocean and all that kind of stuff will happen. And we really want you to kind of think about it because this election is far from over. Because if we don't wake up in 2024, we'll be suffering the same thing. We're excited, I think, about the wrong things. People were excited because there wasn't this rotunda of a wave of, you know, knocking down all of the Democrats, whatever this is the third, but we didn't hold our seats. And the one thing that I remember that one another correspondent says, and excuse me, I'll, I'll, I'll go back in the comments and, 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 and give, give proper credit, that, you know, they talked about Stacey Abrams and they said, your ambition, your dreams, and your reality are sometimes different. Because in reality, she's supposed to be out there making sure that that vote gets out there from state to state and city to city, because she's a great orator and she can move people. And she's changed the vote and split um, Georgia blue. It is because of her, in spite and despite 
the person who was in office now, who also was the one who was in control of the elections as he was running for office. As well, I didn't want to speak his name, okay? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, so, you know, and, and, so she, and so instead of doing what you are called to do, you do what you want to do. And I have the same smoke for for Ms. Bass and the same smoke for um, what you call it, that ran in Florida against Rubio. About that. About that because those, those, those seats in Congress were sacred. And they needed to be held. That ambition, that mission that you did because of you thinking for yourself and you're not thinking of what your cause is, you know what I'm saying, what you're called to do. You know what I mean? But one thing that came from Val Deming is, uh, I, and I wanted to make sure I, I, I remember this name, but I did. The guy that replaced her, 25 years old, is the youngest member of, of African American, a person of color. To be elected to Congress, right? Five years right. Old. right. And he wouldn't make that. He was her replacement because she had to give up her, uh, right. her seat. But you're right, 100. percent For two reasons. One, and, and I mean, I mean, okay. She said, "Well, you ran a good campaign." Okay. First of all, you lost. You didn't have a chance in hell. Not this one. Forget Florida, about Florida. Florida is a red state, so you should you should have kept your position, even at the end. You know, someone else. But he would have ran and made a different district because exactly, he had Exactly, because he would have. Exactly. But you gave all of that up. And what happened, you made, it, it, it was almost a mockery because you lost by a landslide. By a landslide. It was a seat you could not win. It was a seat you could have been taking with Bass for the for mayor. Yeah. I mean, how come on? Well, that money could have been spent somewhere else. Ryan or North Carolina, who she did on her own, and she came into that her hair. In North Carolina. Exactly. And now they realize well, the Democrats may have blown that. Really? <laughs> they they lost. But you, and, 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 that, and, and I'm so sick of the Democratic Party. They are such wusses. I am so sick of them. Because when you had the power that you had, you didn't listen to the squad and all of them who held off and said, don't give in. Make sure that the Voters' Rights Act and the, all of these kinds of things are going on. It took them five seconds to do the anti-laws um, um, against the Asian and API community when they, when there was a rise in, um, in, in violence against them during COVID. It's been over how many hundreds of years that they haven't been able to come up with an anti-lynching law and all of these kinds of things for us and the George Floyd um, Act and, and, and um, and all of these kind of John Lewis voting rights act still has things on the table, and they said we don't push them two together. Nobody listened to them. And guess what? Y'all, everybody championed Nancy Pelosi and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, Nancy Pelosi, though, um, she ain't gonna be the one whose rights are taken away. No, I, 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 exactly. Her purse and her pocketbook is gonna be just the same. Exactly. They gonna hee hee and holler with her just like everybody else. Because her 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 threat level is not the same as Auntie Maxine's threat level. But it, exactly, and like they said, well, you know, I'm rich, inflation's not going to bother me. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I just think about millions of billions over there, and yeah, you know, that's the poor people who are about. And that and that brings us to the topic at hand: is is the attack on Black America and Black people universally in the world at home. You know, our athletes, our um, our our um, actors and, 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 and our um, politicians and, and, and our just regular people on the streets are under attack. And it's crazy because nobody is seeing this. You know it's more crazy? And I'm not even going to Okay, where's the NAACP? As soon as Kyrie Irving said that, the anti-defamation league of Judah, immediately, they were there. You know? So where's the NAACP? This, this goes to what you just said. Like, 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 where is our defense? So we as black people have to stop with this. Well, we're going to show them that we're not like that. No, we need to be like that. Exactly. We need to be like the anti-defamation league. When, when, when they, and then look at what they did with LeBron James who built schools, but they don't talk about that. And with Kyrie, I know you want to get to um yeah, but, so, that, so I was I was getting into with the with, you know because okay Ky Kyrie Irving is being pers persecuted, right? 
and he has yet to have said anything. He didn't tweet anything that was inappropriate. He didn't say anything that was inappropriate. He just posted something that Jeff Bezos and Amazon are profiting off of. Who put it out there? And it's third, it is third on the on the showings at on, on Amazon. And not not one iota against him. And, and everybody in in these in, in the stupid uh, stupid people who are going after them, and I and, and I won't even give the dignity of because I feel like that's kitchen table talk, calling out those icons, but they know who they are. Call them a fool and a buffoon and all of those kinds of things. They know who they are, and it's and, and if you're the fool and the buffoon, because the only reason why they're doing that is because ESPN is now looking to. Invest in the NBA like the investment that was done with the NFL. So they want to. They also there's this there's this this meme on um this meme on the on the internet of of Levar and playing Kunta Kinte and getting whooped into submission of being Toby. And they're saying that that's what they're doing to Kyrie Irving to bring him to his to his knees because I said them knees like a little bit yeah. them balls of me <laughs> them knees <laughs> to bring him to his knees bring him to his knees in order to show you you me you what power they have. Like because it's a power play. Yeah. Because he was the only NBA player who was who was vocal about the vaccine, who didn't do it and ended up winning at the end. And they said, oh, no, 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 this N-word is going to heal. He is going to heal. And, and we are going, going to bring it. That's why they use that, that whooping. Because that's what they're doing. They're trying to humiliate him in such a way. And I don't understand how the NBA is, is suspending him for something he did on his Twitter that has nothing to do with his conduct code in the NBA. Yes. Well, and they, they, I mean, okay, first of all, we're the black athletes. It, 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 what they should have done, okay, at least with Kaepernick, they stood arm in arm, they all took a knee. Okay, that was their form of protest. But far and few are coming to support um, Kyrie. When I saw the list of things that they wanted him to do, I'm like, you know what? There's and refused and rejected his five hundred million dollars. You are so is he, not. You are not worth five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand dollars. And rejected it. Said that's not enough. Yeah. What more do you want? Exactly. Then he comes Nike. Here's what gets me. You run Calvin Company, Calvin. You run him out of football, and then because he decided to take a knee, I'm it's very brief. And they said, well, because it was slap in the face to the military. But yet, we had to watch January 6th. And all these people are saying, they erected a gala to hang the vice president of the United States, and they were called patriots. And they spear pieces in the end of the Yeah, on that, but they were called patriots. They beat the crap out of a hundred cops, threatened to hang the vice president, and Nancy Pelosi, and they're called patriots. But John Carpenter, Carpenter didn't utter a word, just took and a mind you, and he lost his He, 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 he the, taking the knee was from one of the um, players who served in the yes. military, who said this is how you would be respectfully, yes. you know, to, you know. And he asked because this body. But but that, that's But he was suggested it. by a white player yes. who was in the military. Yes. So then we move from him to what's going on with, um, with Tiger Woods. So now, it's Justin Timberlake and Serena right, Williams yeah, like who are who are yeah, who are um, backing him because he's, he says CBD saved his life, and if it wasn't for CBD, he would have. So now the pharmaceutical companies are coming after him and suing him and, and yada 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 yada. Now I already said to him he already got a shellacking before when he married that old pair. And for those who don't know what an old pair is, it's a nanny or or whatever, a woman who take care of your kids. And that's what she was before she met him. She ain't had no money. And he had an ironclad uh, prenup, just like Eddie Murphy. But he let them folks talk him into giving her five hundred million dollars And she, and, and mind you, she was the one who was violent with him. He had the affair, but she was violent with him. She could have went to jail. And well, 
She hit him with a golf club and everything. Mm -hmm. Broke up with Cardi, all that kind of stuff, whatever. Now they're giving him another shellacking over the fact that he doesn't want to go with the traditional pharmaceutical companies and talk about the drugs that they prescribed and all that kind of stuff. And he invested in the CBD company. And they're saying that he, he's in um, breach of contracts and all this other kind of stuff. Why have you just said third? So now this is the other shellacking. Then we have Tiffany Cross from Cross Connection on Saturdays being fired by MSNBC the day before she was supposed to air. Last Friday, she's supposed to air on Saturday. Last Friday, they told her she could no longer come on because allegedly about what she said on Charlemagne's The um, God Show um, that one hell of a week and also because of that correspondent on Fox News, which we won't mention his name either, but he, um, but his, his name sounds, sounds with um, Browns with Sucker. <laughs> They said because you were unmanageable. And then they also that you also that came for you also <laughs> came for Joy Ann Reed. And now yeah. you're telling me today they're not that, right. They announced that today. That the, uh, the readout, they're not renewing on her contract. And so she, that's two black women right. in the media. Now she immediately came to defend Tiffany, Tiffany Cross. Exactly. And she was and what she said. And she was just on election night. She, she right. She she did the whole thing, the whole election for two nights, she was, and she said, "Where are the other anchors? It don't matter what color you are. We cannot. We can't be silenced." So and and, and, and Rachel Maddow like, was getting at home eight million dollars just to be there on Monday. And where and are they? they say nothing. And, and where are they? Like they should have immediately. They they should have never let it get that far. As soon as they heard that, they should have come to the defense and say, "Look, this is news." When our Fox, at least we don't, you know, we don't report a broadcast bullshit on me. But so because you're saying she's unmanageable, what that, what does that even mean? Well, you, know, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's, you know what that is. You know, it, you know it, it, because it's always this unmanageable, unlikable, unrelatable, all these things, these, these, these tropes that they use. But yet, and still, we're supposed to always be like, oh my God, they said something that was anti this and anti that. But nobody comes to our rescue, not even our own selves sometimes. And I hate to say that. Sometimes we, we also join in in fear of being caught up in that wave of cancer, of cancel culture, and all this other kind of stuff that's going on. Oh, 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 we, oh, we become, we become, we should have been Democrats. Well, we can punish our own. Yes. <laughs> really? We, we, oh, yeah, we can show we can punish our own. Absolutely. But that should be the reverse. It should be the adverse of that. We should support our own. If news is supposed to be freedom of speech. How can you tell someone they're unmanageable? You give them a platform. Okay, we know MSNBC leans left. Okay. Fox leans far right. <laughs> if they lean up there, if they lean more right, they'd be on the they'd be on the moon. <laughs> but they're allowed to do that. This is what they're hired to do. That's their platform. And they, 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 they're the hired And they're unapologetic about it. And they're unapologetic. And, and at least MSNBC, at least uh, 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 Tiffany Cross, tells the truth. It but, doesn't matter how she breaks down. She tells the truth. But, but you just got, let's put this in perspective. Because when um, the guy that comes on at 8 o'clock, I ain't going to say his name either, give him no problems. On MSNBC, y'all look him up, y'all see who I'm talking about. He, when he breaks it down about the systemic racism, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Ari Melba because I like him. When he breaks it down, yeah, I see, systemic I see. racism and all of that. When Rachel Maddow breaks it down, she has a whole podcast breaking down the American system and how things are, and she does, and she does it, and she goes into criticism, right? and, and, and you know what I mean. And she and she breaks it down. She doesn't get by. Right, and she caught the most criticism for not coming to defense. Yes, everybody, because she because she she's the, she's one of the most powerful people. What yes. yes. and, and and the guy that comes on at eleven o'clock. Yes. Um. Uh, well, not not eleven at ten. Sorry, at ten o'clock. You know what I'm saying? And um, he and he and he, you know, didn't say anything, and he's constantly talking about his 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 efforts in Africa with giving his back to schools and this, that, and the third, and, and doing his fundraising and all of this kind of stuff, whatever, and this, that, and the third, what have you. And it's it just, it's mind boggling to me that 
Roland Martin is the only one out there vocally. He, they actually wrote a petition telling that uh, MSNBC that by November 11th, they expect to have a meeting over the firing of Tiffany Cross. Now you're telling me this happened with Joanne Reed. Yes. And I'm like, I was what the I fuck? And here. guess what? Roland Martin, somebody on his panel said, well, we need to work. And he said, see, that's the one thing that we first are going to look. No, we need to first follow these steps and then go to the extreme. Well, here's what you do. Okay, if, if, if you do the boycott, you're doing it. What you have to do is you have to do what you call mega bitch and complain. You have to let it, let your displeasure be known. And what you do is you have to go up to the people who should come to her to like You should go up to Rachel Maddow and go, well, what are you doing about a Tiffany Cross? Right. Put pressure on her so that they have to do it. We as black people, you know, sometimes we do it. And I hate to get into we as black people thing, but sometimes you can't help it. We have to stop showing that, well, we're going to show that we're not that type of black person. We can say we can, you know, put us to our to our home. We can, no, we can stop doing and we're the ones who are quick to send somebody to the firing squad. And I don't believe that we need to go after Rachel Maddow. I think we need to go after Oprah Winfrey. I think we need to go after Gail. Well, I, just I think, think we need to go because those people who are in a position, you know what I'm saying? Um, and what's this? Um, Byron Allen. And he has all of these different networks and stuff like that that he's he buying up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 All of these people, these are the ones who we need to be going after, saying, look, what are you going to do? When are you going to create own and make sure that own is owned by you? It's not owned by her anymore. And she and so she's not considered black media anymore. So we need to create something that is about us, for us, by us. Sorry, boo boo. <laughs> but it's the truth. Because where else are we going to be able to be ourselves, speak for ourselves? And and that's why I have been fighting so hard to with this show. People don't understand that I've been doing this show since about 2009. I've been on many, a many, a many a platform. And I keep getting to a certain level, and then it's like, no, 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 no. Now I've been called monkey. Nigga, this, that, and third on air, live on air, where people actually called in and cussed me out. And I wasn't even talking about the black agenda. It was just my black face being there and what have you. That's what made me decide to become independent. That's what made me decide to, to do this. And even now, being on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yada, 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 this, that, and third, I'm still not completely just come to my pages on my Roku station or my Pandora or my um this or you know what I'm saying all of my separate stations that I have that are locally for me and that benefit me financially and everything will have you. Roland Martin had it right. We need to start to own our stuff again. We have to because well, we are never we mind. will never ever we will never ever be in this system and be able to get the rights that we deserve because it wasn't designed that way. And if you look at the Democratic Party, there are more people who are against us than are for us. Um, true. True. And if we, if, we, if we joined in with our brothers and sisters and our brethren and everything and just made sure that we took care of each other, you got a loaf of bread. I got a little bottle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I got to bring it create, we together. Can create the dinner. Exactly, you know? So, I mean, like, and I and I know I sound idealistic, and I know that I sound um, maybe uh, a little uh, bitter or whatever to some folks or whatever to a third. But I have the right to be that. What we do. And, 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 I, and I have the right to voice my opinion on what's wrong. Because I'm not running to no capital. Exactly. Why I can't say it on Twitter? Wait, you, 
You know, Kyrie, Kanye. Kanye. Why I can't say it on Twitter? You know, but I but, but I can run to the Capitol and tear down. I can run to Michigan State Building and threaten the governor and all of that kind of stuff or whatever. And go there with guns and rifles and go to the, the polling um, sites with, with handguns and rifles and go to people's houses and burn courses on their lawns and go and you know, the list goes on and on. I'm not doing any of those things. So how am I more threatening and more violent than them? Joseph, <laughs> I, 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 when I saw the congressman said, what she when he said, um, Nancy Pelosi, well, she's going to be gone. She will not be speaker of the house. She may not control the, get the gavel, just like she can't. But but she's able. She we should be able to control the hammer. Now, and they got an applause. So. And, and <laughs> This is why we just can't always feel that we have to be the righteous one. And this is why the Democrats, they really, you know, and, and it, 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 I just think that we need to start our own party. Well, you know what it is? This is why the biggest party right now, not even Democrats or Republicans, is the independent. Now, they say independent. They're saying, no, I'm not an independent party. I'm independent of these two parties. Well, so actually, they most, need independents, to most independents are Republicans who don't have the stomach. Yeah, no. yeah, it's been it's been factually proven that the majority of people who are saying that they're independent during certain elections are more leaning right towards now, well, I shouldn't say Republican, conservative rather, are more conservative than they are because there are no more Republicans. Right. Yeah. They're, they're more conservative than they are liberal. And good. the reason why they're doing this independent is because they are um saying that they can't stomach to vote for a Democrat. That's what that's about. See, we keep forgetting what the problem is. We always vote Democrat no matter how dirty they do us. But those, those people who are saying they are independent, it's because they can't stomach to vote for a Democrat. They are against some, some, of what the Republican Party stands for, but they will never vote Democrat. So they'd rather split the vote up to where as 2% and 6% or keep that Democrat from getting 50%. Look at Warnock, look at that race. That, um, that part, part, party he's from the, um, not the individual party, the uh, libertarian. libertarian party or whatever, that 2% that he got could have easily went to Warnock and pushed him over where they wouldn't have to have a right wall. You have to realize, and, and not you as in you, because I know that you are well versed and understood. I'm saying this for you folks out there who don't understand certain things about um this about this voting game and the games that people play with that so games people play. It's because the words have power. And when I say that I'm a liberal. And when I say I'm an independent, that does not mean that I'm not conservative. That just means that I'm not voting for your black ass. <laughs> That's all that means. But fact, truth be told, in the last two elections with Obama and Biden, they won the large, the lion's share of the independent vote. That's what actually got Biden over the top because he was not he was not a one without women or the independent. And they voted over me for the and, 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 and guess what that got you? That no. got you IQ 45. That got you insurrection. No, no, I went in that got you because guess what they did? They flipped the script. Because see, it's one thing. Well, we got IQ 45. It wasn't because of that. It's because IQ 45 was 70, 71,000 votes in three states. And one of them is because Italy, they said, well, why didn't you move when she didn't go? She just didn't go to Michigan. They were like, why didn't you go to Michigan? And that and it, I, I honestly, and I have to disagree with you, Brother Leon. I honestly, I honestly don't believe that. I know she was um well um very unliked. I didn't like her. I held my nose going for her as well. But I'm telling you that what happens sometimes is people will do certain things. Because if you look at the presidency, with the exception of Trump and the Bushes, and maybe for me in my time that I can remember or what have you, presidencies, presidencies have been really pushovers. 
they haven't been able to really push an agenda, neither here nor there, or be able to stand up for anything specific. And years, 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 it hasn't been that way. Except so Obama, I feel like that Obama I feel like huh? except the bond with health. Healthcare, smellcare, healthcare, smellcare. So you ask some people who's who's getting Obamacare and how much it costs for them to get it, and the real story behind that. You know what I'm saying? If you don't really have really true health insurance like that, and not buying it and all that kind of stuff, and you're forced to do it because you don't have any other choice, for people, it is sometimes unattainable. The amount of money that they have to spend in copays and all that kind of stuff. We can put the I ain't here to get into that right now. But what I say, I'm saying that to say this is because. What happens is that people might say one thing and mean another. They might push that leaf up to vote for him, but they want to be able to say, see, didn't I tell you, Darkie, you weren't supposed to be in office. You done did this and did this, that, and the third. And everything that happened since then has been an excuse for the ignorance, the anger, the animosity, and all of that. And all of this has risen. And it gave it gave an opening after that after that correspondence dinner for IQ forty five to rip right into the end and rip the bandaid off over everything that's been bubbling under the surface all along. What kind of IQ forty five and, and and this is it <laughs> because he can say what is it. America is becoming a brown country, and it's going to happen in much half the time than anticipated. That's going to happen. Nothing in the world is going to change that. So, and the white in this country that have power, their money will not carry the same weight when they don't have the numbers. So, why Trump was so popular with MAGA is why the attack, why why January sixth happened, is because. When they say he's one of us, what they're saying is that they can, there's someone that can say at the top can say what they feel. We don't want those Mexicans here. We don't want those niggas that have rights. But now you have Trump who come along when he came down the escalator and said front thing said about the Mexican. They go, we got one of us. That's what the KKK said. They, they said, we finally got one of us. This is why he's still so popular. But he's not that popular. He is with his base, he's right now, maybe to say he for Republicans, he is it's 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 the Trump party. He controls that party. You can't say he's not popular. Look at who doesn't bow down to Trump. A, a handful. Every politician who's McCarthy, including McConnell, all of them. He just says that. But see, the thing is, is that everybody, everybody is saying how powerful he is, and and he is not that powerful. It is with, with his base, what, what, not not in the whole grand scheme of things, but within the Republican Party. I'm not right now. Right, right, yes. right. But 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 that but that 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 also is is something that you have to look at in in bite sized bosses. You have to be able to figure out where his power is coming from and where it's leading and where it's not. It's not the fact that they believe in him. Of course That's a bull crap. Right. It is because he's a bullhorn for all of exactly. everything else. That's so it's right. not about him. No, they can exactly. care less. And that's what I'm talking about. No, that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. The vote Obama. It wasn't because they wanted to see him president. It was because they wanted to see him fail so that they could say, we gave y'all a shot. Because if that wasn't the case, then Bill Maher wouldn't be on television being a liberal and slept with all these black women and think that he's so cool for school and his weeds from the behind talking about Kamala Harris saying how Vice President Harris is an ineffective politician and allow somebody on his show to lie about the rates of people who she put in jail for marijuana when it was 145 people put in, uh, put in for her predecessor, and under her, it was 45 people. Well, when when she know. came up with these laws that put people to work, as opposed to putting them to jail, put them in training, as opposed to, and we 
ran along with that narrative. Yeah, she put black people in jail. And he went along with it. And he's going to go along and talk about this, this, that, and the third. But he's supposed to be on our side. Wow. But if you want our side, like that. then be on our side. Well, because like I said to you, like I said on my on my Twitter and on my Instagram, when people ask me, well, what is it that I can do? People of a of color, mainly white people, I said lay in front of me instead of having my back. Get your head busted open like I got mine and my ancestors got theirs. Show me. Have my front, not my back, because behind my back you can do this and this. But with Obama, that was a Jackie Robinson effect. Because you know what Jackie Robinson and Joe said, because he said if their best fail, then that sets a precedent for the rest of them to be exactly. capable of mm-hmm. said whatever said job, said position. But that was a Jackie Robinson effect. Um, it just so happens that it came out today that uh, Michelle Obama is the most decorated and most intelligent first lady in history. Yes. For two degrees. Yes. Yes, and and, and, she, and she was more progressive and more out there and more outspoken than and then her own husband oh, yeah. was the president. Yes, and they would have been he, tra- he played the two men on the road. Well, you know what? He had to. He did not have to. Yeah, I think he did, he did not he have to. to. Why? He had two terms, and they already was going to do what they was going to. do. I would have did a full out IQ 45. I would have did a full out of, of just going all out because what's the what's the couldn't because after because when he, they he were, not that he couldn't he wouldn't he, and he, he didn't. didn't have the house on the Senate. It didn't matter. It, so it, not the not the IQ 45. Not the IQ 45. He didn't do anything. The only thing Trump Trump did two things when he was in office. He passed well. The Supreme Court justice he just happened. That was the major thing. He put three, three Supreme well, Court justices, he, he, and then all the judges across the across the circuit. He was, that was the most major thing in the world because that's about we in the in the, the final mess that we are now because he was able to do that. So don't say he did nothing. No, no, he did major. He did three things. What I'm telling you. The second thing he did was he put through the biggest type uh, tax cut for the wealthy in history. Now, everybody gets a 10 year tax cut, but then it's going to expire in four years. The rich is permanent. He did that. And the third thing he did, and I hate to give him credit for any damn thing, but he did push through the rush to get uh, the vaccine. And then he turned around and tried to clean up because the economy was going so bad, he wanted people to not, to not uh, quarantine. So that little bit of so those are the three things he did. And those three things were more important than anything that um than, than um President Obama did throughout his own presidency. You know why? Because it shaped this country for decades to come. Well, it's not going to be for decades. It's going to be for decades. No. You don't. Those people I'm have lifetime sure. appointments. Are you kidding me? Oh, you mean the Supreme Court? Well, 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 and, 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 and why do you think we didn't even in? But How do you think, think Rome got turned over? How do you think they did not do civil rights? But that was, okay, first of all, the Supreme Court was Mitch McConnell. That was a Trump. Trump just happened to be president at the time. But Mitch McConnell didn't put nobody in. in yes, he did. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell could not put anybody in seats on a, on a judge's penalty without a president. Uh, yeah. So, therefore, what he did president. was more consequential and more effective than anything. This because for decades, we are going to have to weed through this mess. That Look at the true. lower court circuit where they were doing this investigation and they all this judge all of a sudden out of nowhere says, oh, you need to have this done, this and the third, and the higher courts have to smack her down. Yeah, that's fine. But, but because and we're going to keep going through that. What do you think is going to happen when people start to, to say, the election deniers say, oh, I really won and didn't win, and it goes to the states. The same thing that happened to Barbara back when Bush and his brother and his brother or whatever was um, governor or something in Florida, and they end up stealing the election back then. Why would you, this is this is craziness that nobody seems to understand the detriment of what he did. It was significant. But it wasn't Trump. It, let me tell you why it wasn't Trump. Trump just happened to be president. But kind of, It wouldn't have got done without him. He was president at the time. But, but it wouldn't have got done without him. Not, not true. But here's where McConnell got it done. That's why I'm saying it's Mitch McConnell. Trump is not that smart. He's the one that denied, 
Obama from getting gone. Okay, great. He also yes. did something that had never been done before. The Senate was put, he didn't, he circumvented the filibuster by using the nuclear vote, which had never been done before, to get the second Supreme Court pick. So that was McConnell. Trump was not smart enough to do either of those two moves. So that got two justices. The other one was because Bader Ginsburg died and Trump had to be in office. So do you think that do you think that President Obama came up with Obamacare? No. He happened to be president when they were pushing this kind of um, okay. this kind of legislation. Okay. He didn't come up with the legislation. No, so, 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 but, so you can't have it both ways. You can't say that he's responsible for health care and Trump's not responsible. You got to say this ignorant man's name. IQ 45 is not responsible for these judges. You can't have it both ways. This is gonna go down in history. Under his name, you could not win it. Because only because he was president. It, it and was only because him. only because Obama was president that he gets credit for the Affordable Care Act. It, it's I still disagree. <laughs> but it's the same thing. Trump gets what Trump got a gift pick because Ginsburg died and he was president. The and because she wouldn't be right. right. She should have left just when she was sick for well, these years. The other two picks, if it would would have not have gone through because the nuclear vote had never been done before. And Trump was not president when McConnell circumvented Obama. Say for instance, in, say for instance, say for instance, Hillary Clinton. Say for instance, Hillary Clinton won. That would have been another four years. There wouldn't have been no judgment. So you cannot say that. It is inconsequential to the fact that him. Now maybe the mastermind behind getting that is the um the what you call it, the whatever, the uh federalist, federalist list. Because those are the ones who put forth the list of the, of the people who he voted oh, yeah. for. And Mitch McConnell made sure that he maneuvered the Senate in a way to make sure that those votes went through. Then that was the, now that was him. But as far as anything else, it goes on and lies on the shoulder of the president at that right. time. Well, because he was president. It goes under his name. He won't get credit for it. Right. But that's 50 50. I don't give him credit for doing it because that was not his doing, except for Ginsburg. No, you get credit for it. Just like Obama, Obama will get credit for the Affordable Care Act. Exactly, because he was president. But the difference is, at least Obama ran on the agenda to get health care done. Trump didn't run on, you know, Trump ran on just making the wealthy wealthy. I remember when he did the tax cut, you see he came down the aisle to the presidential address, he shook hands, he said, I just made you very rich, I took care of those taxes for you. I might just open it. Well, we're not going to talk on him. I don't want <laughs> no more. I'm just going to say this. He gets credit for it. I don't give him credit for nothing else. He did it. It wasn't Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell was not president. Mitch McConnell was not even in um in even third in line to be president because there is nobody third in line in the Senate to be president. The third in line person is was that guy who left, who was um third in line um what's the name um Ryan whatever his name was. Who was the Speaker of the House? Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. So he was third in line for the presidency. So bump that. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's because see, we, we need to teach civics the way that it needs to be, and people need to know where power really lies. And that was the succession of the presidency of what happened. And only the president has that power. Mitch McConnell had the power of the Senate to be able to move him around as the senator. The Federalist um, list was the ones who came up with the list of all of the people who were put into place what happened. So it was a combination between those trifectas that made it happen. But if if if, if IQ forty five at one moment at one point said bump that, it would have all failed. It would have all failed if he would have just just got mad at Mitch McConnell over tea leaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would have all failed. So you have to give credit where credit is due. Well, he had, he, had, he went credit. along. He went along with it, and he will get credit for that. This. If this is this this conversation could go on and on for sixteen years. <laughs> we done got off the topic of black power and Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. We done got off got, got off the topic, and I refuse to go on that rabbit hole anymore. <laughs> I refuse to go on that rabbit hole anymore. Let's talk about something good. Something good that's going on. Let's talk about the New York. Uh, the, the, that's good. Yes, they won last night. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so what are they, two and eight? <laughs> I think they're three and seven. 
See, um, this is another one with this glass is half empty bullshit. They won last night. They, they did a great job last night, and they are proving that they had an idiot coach. Now they just need to get rid of that general manager. Um, which I don't think that's going to happen. Because here's why. Today they said that the, the situation between Kyrie and the Nets, it's, um, it can't be fixed. That they've come to the end of the road. So he's not going to be in that that much longer. And that's going to have an effect on Durant because at Durant's age, he's not going to be a part of any rebuilding uh, process. And he told them that. He said, okay, you got Ben Simmons, so I don't know what's going on with him. And you keep Kyrie, you have a court. You've got uh, Simmons, um, uh, uh, name that's going to be, who was injured last year. You got him back. And you got Seth Curry back. So they're kind of molding together. But now, and the way they're treating Kyrie, the morale is very low. And, and I mean, just, they, they want it. I'm in that bad. Because we, we, the whole thing of the whole concept of having Kyrie and Durant, two of the best superstars that we never thought would be in New York, in Brooklyn of all places. And now it's just going south. So I really can't get excited about the win last night when that's going to be. Like what's going to be the next move? Well, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that Kyrie Irving or Durant makes the New York team. I think that the, that the young ends are showing that they came to play, and I think that there is going to be a franchise built from this mistake that they made, putting these icons together and making them. They gave them too much power, and they was not able to build up this team. The proper way. That's the way that I look at well, it. I think that Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant needs to have a little bit more humility when it comes to the other players. I understand Kyrie Irving is his boy, and I understand that um, whatever. But if this is the end of the road for them, so be it. And I don't think that he should be pushed out for this particular reason. But he has either. always shown either. himself to be a selfish player. And this is an unbiased kind of conversation about him because I'm on his side when it comes to his right for the vaccine. I'm on his side when it comes to his right to be able to speak out publicly, even though he did not speak out publicly against any group of people. He just put a post up and he hasn't even even, even supported anybody. He has not made a mission of support for any film or anything like that. But he has always been a selfish player. He has always been about himself. He's always been seen, I'm sick, but yet he's in the strip club. I'm this, but yes, this, that, and the third, or whatever, whatever. So I think that people are a little bit sick of him. That's why they kind of want to throw him under the bus for the other stuff. But I think that Kevin well, Durant, if right. he wants to get a championship, the way that they played last night is the way that they need to play. And even the way that they played the night before, even though they lost by two points because Kevin Durant missed his free throws. But that young kid, what's his name? With the little twist, I can't think of his name right now. The one that they didn't play last season. And um, I can't think of his name, excuse my ignorance, somebody who is telling me what I'm talking about in the building. And, 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 and all of the other people are showing their worth. So I think it's disrespectful to them as a team to talk about Kyrie Irving because even when he came back, he ain't do that great. It's, 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 uh, <laughs> we had visions of grandeur. Like, yeah, because so. But they got great kids. No, they got great kids. I, what, what they need to do is, um, what I think is going to happen is they're going to trade, um, um, Kyrie and they're going to trade him to the Wizards for, um, Bradley Field. Mm-hmm. And that would benefit the Nets great because exactly. you have a guy that's of equal talent. And he is more of a team player. He's not as selfish. And I love Curry. Don't get me wrong. I think he's one of the most talented players. But he's his um, own own talent. He, he, he is his and, own and it has nothing to do with this. And right, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with him strictly right. on the court, right. playing to get in a team. He is not a team player. He thinks about himself. Even when it came well, to that, he won a championship with LeBron, and he shook hands, and he goes, "This is the first. And then LeBron hands in the paper in Cleveland when he said, I went out of here. I want to be on a team where I can be a leader. And LeBron said, wait, you're just talking about us coming back next year and defending that title. He went to Boston and said, I've got a home for life. 
and then made a, a trade for players that they, that he wanted that he could play with. And then the next season, the same thing. He left. But the Rams did the same thing to um, which well, it, um, Golden State. Golden State. Um, he he played play. with his brother, with the brother of the guy he left. You know what I'm saying? Seth Curry. Seth Curry. Curry. You know what I'm saying? So it's like to me, I feel like those two names. And what's the one who just left who went to Boston? What's his name? Oh, um, um, that, you know. <laughs> this is what you call age. <laughs> okay. The other you know big the three. You know the guy. The <laughs> other big three player, or whatever, is that a third, left us, oh, what happened. Yeah. And, like, it's like, come on now. Give me a break. You, you give these guys all of this, but you realize, like, look at LeBron James. He can't buy a win. You know what I'm saying? You put all of this effort on these players, and this is not the same league that it used to be, where there is a bunch of bums and one superstar, like yeah. like um, Will Chamberlain yeah. and yeah. all these things. You know, Will Chamberlain able to play 48, 48 minutes of the game, and with you is unheard of nowadays. 48 minutes of the game and the hundreds of our points and yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera, what have you. They don't have these giant superstars anymore. These kids is bringing it. Yeah, and you have to utilize this talent. Well, look at the West. You got eight teams that won from fifty plus games. Eight. Mm -hmm. That's unheard of. And it could be a night, depending if they get their team back, mm -hmm. the, the engine players back. So that's unheard of. So there is no more, you know, like like the Bulls of uh, Lakers and Boston. You know, they want to be for the next five years. So in, in a way, it's more parity in the league. It makes it more exciting. Makes it better. Like I love John Moran. He's the most excited player in the game today. <laughs> Uh, you will so, see. And so the Knicks can't take him out of the Knicks. Knicks got a young team and they're doing okay. They're doing okay. Yeah, they are. But they like five and six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll get because they, 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 they lost one play, they got another one. So they'll fit and they'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So what programs are you watching now? Um, You know what? I haven't really that much, to tell you the truth. Um, I haven't got, well, okay, well, I do, I'm going <laughs> Jiggle up with Lord of the Rings, Black Power of the Rings, and uh, House of Dragons. House of Dragons is, is uh, my show. Those should be because they're pickups from what we watch, and, you know, and they, they, they live up to the hype. Oops, I remember. Yeah, I the House of Dragons is really good. Really good. I'm, 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 watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. watching. Okay. I, 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 watch. I, I ain't watched that crazy. No, I, 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 I didn't watch that before. That, that story. I ain't watched that before been told too many times for one thing. I'm like, you know what happened. So I don't need to see the gory detail where you get someone, you know. What about Abbott Elementary? Um I like that. It's what I like. It. <laughs> it's funny. I love it's that. I love I love that. that. It's a feel good show. So I got Queen Sugar is doing pretty good. I'm I'm I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm like Queen Sugar what I'm seeing one year. When the final episode will have you. I um, have that in East New York. Um, oh yes, East New York. Actually, that it's it's a really um they have a nice mix of veteran actors because they have to call them both back. And um, it's, it's, it's really cool. I, I, I'm liking that show. I really am. Yeah. Speaking of that, the equalizer with Queen Latifah. Yeah, you know what? I watch I watch less news um, because it's not, it's, it's, you know what? It's not news anymore. It's, um, it's okay. It's not news where you, 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 you do a broad spectrum spectrum of everything that's good. It's topics that they harp on just over and over and over and it's boring and you go, all right, the next, you know, the next show, the next the next hour, they open up with the seven. We just want us to bring this out of the end to the end. So I, 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 I don't watch it like like you try to catch up on current events with what it should be called, what it's supposed to be. And it's just not. It's, it's not even it's, it's not even worth watching. So I watch a little bit, like I watch the election coming nights, and I, you know, let me see what's going on. And I watch it a little more because it wasn't the tsunami or the wave. Like, I, I, I find myself that um, I'm I'm surfing. Um, I'm watching like some YouTube um, channels and seeing a lot of these up and coming um, black creators and black content and stuff like that, and, and watching a lot of that stuff. What I mean, I'm also looking at the LGBTQ space and watching some of the things that they're coming up with and i'm also getting into black anime like there's some good things in black animation um there is this show let me see if i can find it guys that i want to put you guys on just to. Jazz it's man. called um it's called uh it is called 
Intergalactic. Intergalactic on Netflix. You gotta watch it. It's yeah. super dope. Super, super dope. Also, the, um, there's this other one. Um, this other one, I can't think of the name of it. But trust me, guys, Intergalactic. I'm really getting into the app like anime space. I mean, like, it's it's dope. When I tell you the character, the character's like, remember how um, people used to be like, oh, I would, I would bang Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> like, that, like, these characters are, but they, they look like, like avatars of humans, and it's so dope. And it's so realistic, and I mean, like, it's 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 like you know, it, it it takes me it takes me out of the funk of every day. You know what I mean? And I'm starting to get a lot more into that. Speaking of um, that, call me. My film, call me, has won awards, and we're being um, honored in a bunch of film festivals. And this show, Fashion Woman Tight Chum, we won best host. Um, also, um, at, um, at one of the festivals. I know, and thank you all for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I got you, Jay. In Tai Chung brand, I just um, launched um, the um, the ready to wear collection for the Tai Chung brand. I've been showing you the sneakers and hats and things um, all last season. And this September for New York Fashion Week, Spring Summer 2023 collection, we launched the brand which consists of everything you can think of, including bedding and even doggy clothes. So with that, let's go to our closing thoughts. Um, normally I would have like a phrase, but what, what, you know what, this is gonna be a, two things. I mean, so I'm going to reiterate to men, get your PSA level check. Um, it saved my life. Um, it's imperative <laughs> that you do. And I want to say kudos to our, to the backbone of our culture right now, our black women who showed up and showed out. Um, Cross platform, Republicans, Democrats, it was, it was record numbers of women. And we have to give tribute uh, to them and acknowledge the great things that our African American queens are doing. Highest enrollment, most entrepreneurial businesses, um, most uh, entering into uh, the political field. So, and the tech world. And the tech world. And then the they don't get the accolades that they do, and we all know why. So I'm going to use that time to say we are proud of you and continue showing the way so that if you can do it, we have to look at you and say, damn it, we can do it. So kudos to you, and that's my closing well, my closing thought is. And congratulations to you. I got congratulations on all your achievements. We didn't get into the line is awesome. Uh, so I got to do shopping for Christmas gifts. Now I'm only going to get gay and get some Tai Chung. That's so right. Chun Wei. Exactly. You've been trying. <laughs> and, uh, but the movie, I know you have another one out there. Yeah, Black Roots so Matters. We're in, we're, in, we're in post production for Black Roots Matters. That's my second film, so Good. yeah, we have. And last but not least, I'm really going to have to cut it off here because we have some contracts. <laughs> yes, we do have some contracts. We're not dying. Because I'm getting ready to <laughs> Tiffany force this in word. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Cross, you know what I mean? So my, 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 my um, I'm saying about the book, Sticking the Chris Tiffany Cross, if, when she's on YouTube with Jason Johnson. I mean, I watch them every Saturday. I just love her. I think she's sister from another mother and sister from another mister. Um, and I just love her to death. And I just I pray for her for what she's going through right now. I know it came to her as a surprise. So my thing is, I want you guys to just pay attention and support black businesses. I just started, I just started with One United Bank, which is a black owned bank. I have an appointment with, um, with Carver Bank to start doing my business accounts with Carver Bank because I couldn't get it with One United because they only do banking with the states that they're in and in California, Chicago, and somewhere else or something like that. I might be misquoting Chicago, but I know it's definitely California and two other states. You have to go actually inside to do the business account. So I'm going to meet with the people at Carver Bank or what have you. And also that Buy Black movement. 
get on their website and start to look at some of the products that you have in your house that you can replace with that. I'm really getting a kick on to that too. I've joined them as not only a vendor, but I've also joined them as a consumer. And I will be um, consciously looking to buy from us, for us, by us, excuse me again, boo -boo. you know, I love you guys. And I will um, be making a conscious effort to make sure that our black dollars circulate in the black community to benefit us so that we can have an economic power outside of the power that we already have in the three to four trillions of dollars that we spend in consumer um, consumer wares as a community a whole, at whole and um, being 13, 14% of the population that's counted. You hear me say that's counted because I don't believe that we're only that amount. I believe it's more upwards of 25%, but you know, I digress and start to looking more into black media. I'm creating a platform where I will start to reveal soon enough on where you can find us and get us as I have things locked down. So as we talk about conscious negotiations, I'm about to typically cross this anyway. Him and him, LeBron, Kyrie, and Wait, all of them can go on into the sunset, honey, because I'm with the new and the young. <laughs> <laughs> so take take time to enjoy you enjoy yourself love on somebody love on yourself take some time to talk to yourself even if it's to take a sip of tea and look out the window and look at the horizon of what the creator has created for us live a free free life and we are out of here this has been a fashion moment with Tai Chi peace out to you live a free free life and we will see you next week see you see next week, week. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>